I think Adam's only saying how great it is because now he's stuck with it. He's got to sell it. Does someone know it? Okay. Alright, you guys are all seated on the floor and I want to join you. Hey, cool. Can lights move? Can I sit here? Not move, but... They don't move. They don't move. Okay. Can everyone see me? Good. I can almost, I can almost see the book. Alright. I'm set this down. Thank you everyone for coming out. Round of applause for yourself. Come back. Probably, probably most of you have like nice, normal, uh, Monday to Friday jobs. And you have work tomorrow. If you, if you get your book published, you can work in retail like me. <laughs> and you can have your Saturday be a Monday. <laughs> so, something to look forward to, especially if you're in like an MLA program. This is good. I like this. I like hearing music that I'm not a part of. It's like, there's a party downstairs that you're not invited to. <laughs> or like your roommates are fucking in the room next door and you're just like alone watching like a burner like documentary but not like bears. <laughs> Feels really nice. Alright, whoa! That is intense. Good, you guys can really see me now. We're trying to hide in the dark. Alright. So this book is broken up into like eight entries and that's it. And you'll be able to like something different. So this book is Sunday, September 30th, 2012. I wrote it. I wrote it on that day. Today was the day. It still is. It never isn't. It's either one day or another, but it's never something in between. It doesn't take much to ruin a day for me. Treat me poorly for just a second. I dare you. I don't want to dare you to make me feel bad. The thing is, I'm not very good. Some people walk down the sidewalk and they seem very good, and they're usually walking past me in the opposite direction. It may be that's why. The new dance seeming popularity across the country is called Seeming Better Than Me Momentarily As We Pass Each Other on the Sidewalk. It's sweeping the nation, making me feel bad everywhere I go. Today at work, John said, Working up work orders is my job. Emphasizing my job to make meaning eye contact with me. You can imagine the state. Or maybe you can't. Maybe you're good. Maybe you're walking past me and out of my view and into a cluster of useless ideas that slow me down all the time. Especially when I'm trying to open my mouth or your day in a public restroom. I immediately forgave John. He's not good. He's like me. He cuts his own hair. He lives in my neighborhood. We have a similar job. His job involves writing work orders. Mine apparently doesn't. The difference between us is a few years and a few more reasons to give up. Each one decreasing the likelihood of change. Decreasing the likelihood of improving it or ending it. Each one making it all more bearable, expected, comforting. Continuing to live for logical reasons. No need to rush. Just be patient and you will die eventually. So, <laughs> it's kind of like a little party we're all having here. <laughs> a party in which you all sit quietly in the dark and stare at me. And this one's a list called New Reality Shows. A new reality show called Is This It? Where people do things for the first time and think, Is This It? A new reality show called I Am Single, in which a person sleeps with a body pillow buys eggs in a half dozen containers, and doesn't bother brushing their teeth before bed. <laughs> a new reality show called Do That Lock My Front Door, in which people look vaguely confused for a few seconds before remembering whether or not they locked their front door. <laughs> a, new reality, a new reality show called Is It Okay to Eat This, in which people read the expiration dates of various foods in their fridge and then smell them suspiciously. 
A new reality show called I Wish I Didn't Have to See. That consists of people lying down comfortably in bed and then suddenly having to pee. <laughs> a new reality show called All I Want to Do is Sit Down, in which people work jobs that require standing for long periods of time for low wages. So, if there's any executives out there who want to work on a show with me, contact my publisher. <laughs> Sunday, October 4th, 2012. Sitting in a cafe now, finally getting to work. I need to be in the place for the thing to do the thing. I won't exercise unless I'm in a gym. I won't study unless I'm in a library. I won't get any writing done unless I'm in a cafe. I'm set up at a table that edges into the aisle. I'm in the way, but I like it. I get to apologize to people, and they apologize back. It's reciprocal. The best response to I'm sorry will always be I'm sorry. The best response to I hate myself will always be I hate myself. The best response to I love you will always be I love you. The best response to I'm scared will always be I am too. The only dirty talk I want to hear during sex is apologetic. Alright, as far as people, I get how people use the mic stand. I get the mic stand. <laughs> Okay, this is one of the list of ideas. A form of therapy called It Doesn't Get Better. A bipartisan political party called We Are All Going to Die. A Tumblr called Girls Doing Things, featuring photos of fully clothed girls doing normal things like standing in line at the post office or walking the dog. An internship called Scared and Needy. A brand of whiskey called This Won't Make You a Better Writer. A brand of cosmetics called Afraid of Dying. A t-shirt that says, I'm not this. Instead of asking your neighbors, how are you, try yes or no. <laughs> a dictionary that translates avant-garde loosely as asshole. A body pillow shaped computer case. The dentist's office called First World Problems. A religion called More Scared Than Everyone Else. The Pardo, where two people begrudgingly apologize to each other and sit in silence because the apology is being forced and there's clearly more talking to do. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Moving right along. I was like, I mean, maybe I should just do it. Should I get up there? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
made to sound both new and old, striving to transcend the lifespan of culture. With my laptop, I sit here, a premium ad space. If writing really were masturbation, if writing really were masturbation, I'd be so much better at it. I tap around to different websites, many redundant, looking at Twitter, then opening Twitter and new tabs. I log on to OkCupid, the social network for girls that make me anxious. <laughs> the key to OkCupid, I found, is to make your profile into an impressively neurotic and incoherent mess so that no one messages you or responds to your messages. I move back to Facebook. I tell you, if you feel an aversion to me and I don't feel an aversion to you, please don't feel an aversion to me. I think about how my parents have hoped for more. I think about letting them down constantly. I think, at least I'm not a murderer. Mostly because murderers are very ambitious. Alright, this is another list of ideas. I'm getting all tangled up. Alright. Okay. Are we okay? Yeah. Is everyone okay? Yeah. Great. The tattoo of two people wanting to talk to each other in an elevator. An indie rock band called Sad and Male. <laughs> an online dating site called Emotionally Unavailable but Still Needy. A 24 hour news network called We Just Like Money. A criticism section on animals with Wikipedia pages. A game show called Who's Having a Least Fun. An indie movie called Can't Some Stuff About Life You Already Understand. <laughs> a new thing called Basically the Whole Thing. A prescription drug called I Used to Be a Kid. A bottle of water company called We Really Didn't Think This Would Catch On. <laughs> Alright. Almost done, and then you can hear music, and, and if you want, you can stand up too. <laughs> Monday, January 21st, 2013. Being single, I remember that I'm not good at it. I never feel comfortable around strangers, and I never do well at the bar. I don't charm easily, or come off how I want to. I never have one night stand. I'm really bad at small talk with people that I'm attracted to. I am good, however, at wearing a person down, breaking myself into her life, carving out my knees, leaving it empty, and ruining both of us. It's just a different skill set, you know? <laughs> Friday, March 8th, 2013. This is the last one I'm going to read. So just pay attention to this one. I told her, I'm sorry I'm the thing that you like. She touched my ears and poured me coffee. We walked over to my bed and sat on it. She told me that I have a lot of beauty marks. Calling them birthmarks is more appropriate. Sorry, I, I edited the book, and then I don't remember how I edited it. I've been reading off like this gallon that I got, which you can buy for $200. <laughs> Calling them birthmarks is more appropriate because they are permanent and blameless. She said there's so many on your arms. This morning is the last snow of the season. Saturday is going to be sunny and almost 60 degrees. She and I made a lot of plans. They include walking outside, buying a plant, going to Ikea, going to Project Park with my brother's dog, cutting my hair, baking a pie, looking slow dive, and watching a movie. But it happens in every friendship, and in relationships, it's even worse. That first moment when you feel it, that there's no curiosity anymore. No feelings to share or things to do, and the park bench beneath your body becomes especially hard. And one of you looks at the other with eyes that are all apologies. It's never like how you thought it would be, for as long as you thought it would. Every day, satisfied or not, is comprised of opportunities lost. My forehead, marked permanently by my attempts at conveying sincerity, the way that, as a kid, I learned more complex and vulnerable ways of describing to myself while coming to understand that quicker and simpler descriptions are considered more polite, that these descriptions of things, real or not, don't lead me anywhere. Like the biggest of allegories, how one thing can be compared to the identification of the thing itself, how so much that matters ceases to upon any graduation. Like keeping into oneself, falling asleep at, at night and not being able to remember what you did that day. How getting older transforms from an accomplishment to regret. How memories depreciate like real estate. But you can write a whole book. 
You can call it anything you want. You can print it out and stare at it. On TV, you swear you heard the president say that headaches are the growing pains of our emotions. So by the time you read this, I will be someone older and newer. I will be somewhere else, blending with TV colored walls. Things can only get worse. A loving kind of silence. You having left, then returned. Me having stayed, then stayed. Mathematics and old movies. The depths of centuries inside you. A hot day hug that only comes apart. A book you want to pull together. The story that dies in your hands. Apologies and thanks. It'll be a new year again soon. Thank you.